good evening, everybody. We are going to get started here in just a little bit. I'm going to allow some time with uh, everybody coming in, going to allow some time for folks to join us. Uh, I'm Matt with the Office of Admission, by the way, as you can see by my clever display name on Zoom. Uh, but again, once folks have been able to join, I'll go ahead and give a few housekeeping notes, and then I will hand it off to our true host tonight, Angie, uh, in Residence Life. Okay, so we're still going to have some folks uh, trickle in, I'm sure, but out of respect for everyone's time, I am going to go ahead uh, again and just uh, give some housekeeping notes. Again, you have landed at our uh, Missouri State Residence Life Night, and our entire event tonight is about living and thriving on campus at Missouri State. Uh, I do want you to know that we certainly understand if you're not able to attend the entire event tonight, and we're actually recording uh, this event on YouTube and early next week, possibly middle of next week, we will send everyone who's registered a link to the YouTube recording. So again, we understand uh, when you need to head out, you can head out and we will send you that recording link. We do, as the night goes on, ask for your participation. We're gonna have a series of polls, poll questions that we send out to everybody to get your input, to get your feedback. Uh, each time we're going to give you several seconds to respond to the question and then we're going to show you the results. Most importantly, we want your questions. Obviously very important to us tonight that we get uh, questions from you and know what you want to know, what you want to learn about. And at the bottom of your Zoom is a Q&A tab. And through that Q&A tab at any time you can send us questions. We're gonna answer most questions during the last half of the program, but it is important to us that we answer every question, even if that means we're not able to get to it during the live event, but we'll follow up with you individually after the event. So again, the most important thing I can ask you to do is if you have questions, send those to us in the Q&A tab. We're really excited that you've joined us this evening. We appreciate your time. We certainly know that it's valuable. Uh, hope it's a great event. And with that, I am going to hand it off to our real host tonight, Angie Strider, who is with Missouri State's Office of Residence Life, Housing, and Dining Services. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. So my name again is Angie Strider over in Residence Life, Housing, and Dining Services. Tonight, hopefully we're going to cover, um, answer all your questions, but cover some general information about living on campus, costs of living on campus, um, you know, some of our different programs that we have to offer, um, and also some very detailed information with regards to how to apply for housing. Um, and so we'll get to that towards the end of our presentation. And then, of course, time to answer any questions that you might have have. So I um, just wanted to share some of that with you um, and, um, you know, kind of be ready for that um, during the presentation. Know that we have a number of folks who are behind the scenes who are um, helping us today, um, just answering questions, um, if they come up during the presentation, um, that kind of thing. And then also, um, just no also note that if um, there are any questions during the live period that are um, more personal questions, we won't answer those on air, um, if you will, but but we will get to those um, after the fact. And so we'll make sure we do um, answer, like Matt said, all the questions tonight, but um, I will kind of start from there and give you some basic information about residence life first and then, um, and then kick it off with Q&A. So um, Matt, if you will actually launch our first poll, that would be great if you can help us do that. So um, Matt, are you going to kind of talk through the questions? I think the first one is really just um, who is with us tonight. So if you could share with us, um, you know, if you're a prospective student, parent or family member, high school counselor or other, uh, when would you be entering Missouri State University? 
uh, either in this spring, this January, uh, in the fall, which would be August of 2021, um, or 2022 or beyond. And um, then also, um, if you are, are you a student um, as an incoming freshman or a transfer student? So if you could just let us know that, um, we definitely want to, um, you know, hear that information from you so that we can, um, you know, kind of know who's in our audience tonight, if you will. So we want to make sure we, we know that. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video. That way you can see the full presentation as we go. Okay, Angie, I'm gonna go ahead and share the results. Wonderful. Great. So we have a number of students who um, are just prospective students with us, some family members as well, um, a few other uh, folks attending. As far as when you would be entering Missouri State, it looks like a majority of you are attending for fall, but a few for spring and a few 22 or beyond. So we'll try to cover um, kind of all those different terms and answer those questions about those different application cycles. Um, and are you um, or your student an incoming freshman or transfer student? It looks like a majority of folks are incoming freshmen, but a few transfer students as well. So that is great news. We're going to cover um, hopefully uh, questions that apply to all of those different terms that you might be applying for and answer those questions for you. So let's start tonight with our um, housing policy. So I want to just let me switch. There we go. Our housing policy states that all single students under 21 years of age who have earned fewer than 27 hours of transferable credit after high school graduation are required to live in university housing. Um, and you'll know um, that dual enrollment credits that you might be taking in high school don't apply towards that 27 hours of transferable credit um, with regards to just the housing policy. So do know that most of our incoming students are then going to be living with us on campus. Um, and so um, that is our housing policy. And I'll kind of talk about the data um, that drives that housing policy in just a second. Now, some of you might be um, thinking or considering commuting from home. So just know that if you plan to live with a parent or grandparent whose permanent full-time address is located within 45 miles of MSU, you're going to want to go to this website here. Um, you will actually click the link that says request to live off campus before the semester begins and then the commuter exception form. So know that all of our students who fall under our housing policy um, are required to live with us, um, but we do have a few um, exceptions to that. And being a commuter, living at a parent or grandparent's house within 45 miles is one of those exceptions. Um, but there is some paperwork essentially um, that you do need to complete and make sure that you do that before you attend SOAR. There's a number of benefits to living on campus, including being close to classes, making lifelong friends. Um, of course, the great resources we have on campus, um, our facilities, the leadership opportunities, um, staffing on campus, which I'll get to in just a bit as well. Um, just generally, um, the opportunity to belong to a, an on-campus community um, and feel like you are welcome. Uh, we also have better retention living learning communities, um, and the opportunity to enjoy nutritious, delicious food. So we do promote student success when students are living on campus. We provide an environment to support academics, and that includes study spaces within our residence halls. We have a computer lab um, in each of our residence halls. It's open 24 seven, um, and it's some established quiet hours so that students can um, sleep and study when it makes sense to do so. Um, we also have, of course, experiences to help enhance what our students are learning in the classroom, outside the classroom. Now, we also, um, we, with regards to student success, we like to just let our data, um, you know, kind of do the talking for us. And in fact, we have over 15 years worth of data that shows students who live on campus outperform their peers and have been doing so um, for that long. And that trend continues for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And so we have students who continue to live with us on campus from year to year. Um, and in fact, we have a high percentage of students who live with us 
um, you know, after their freshman year, if you will, um, and a number of transfer students as well. Um, and then also note that our students who live on campus are also more likely to return um, and retain at the university from their first to their second year, as well as more likely to graduate. So kind of any way you slice and dice student success, um, you know, students are more, more successful when they live with us on campus. It's really because we have a number of programs and safety nets, if you will, for our students when they live with us. One of those programs that we offer is called Living Learning Communities, and we have both theme-based and academic-based living learning communities. So uh, an academic-based living learning community, for example, is our Bears business community. All the students who live on that floor are all business majors. So they're taking classes together. They have the same faculty sometimes. Um, you know, they're doing study sessions together. Um, they're all the same major. You know, they're really all um, kind of like-minded, if you will, in that sense. And so you're really um, building that community around those that you're also in class with. We also have theme-based communities. For example, Bears for Sustainability. Bears for Sustainability uh, just is really just a community or floor for students who are interested and passionate about Mother Earth. Um, you know, the students on that floor typically do things like go kayaking um, and picking up trash in the waterways as they go, um, you know, or making um, homemade soaps and things like that. So really just students who have a similar passion or interest um, is kind of the Bears for Sustainability or some of our other theme-based community like creative minds and things like that. Now, there's a number of ways to get involved on campus. Uh, we have the Residence Hall Association. Um, those students are really the voice of our residents on campus. Um, they do take students to regional and national leadership conferences. In fact, they have one coming up um, this year, kind of, it's, you know, all virtual, but usually it's uh, in-person, um, you know, regional and national leadership conferences um, for our students to attend. They do also offer a convenient linen program. So when it comes time to buying those items for your room, um, keep that in mind. But we also offer small organizations within each building, including our hall councils. Again, the students who live in the building are really the voice of the residents who, um, you know, they plan social and educational events and they also guide, um, you know, the, the policies and things like that within the building. Um, we also offer a number of student employment opportunities. In fact, we hire over 300 student employ um, employees each year, and that includes everybody from um, some student front desk workers, we have a ResNet Technology Help Desk. Uh, we have student graphic designers, students who you know, design our t-shirts, um, facilities assistants, a number of students really support our system um, within residence life. We also hire resident assistants. Um, I can tell you personally, I was a resident assistant and I loved my experience. Honestly, I loved my experience my freshman year so much that I came back as an RA year after year. Um, and those students, there are RAs, there's one on each floor and they really serve as a resource for residents and assisting in that transition to college. And they also of course plan those fun events. Now beyond the RA position, we also have a number of staffing positions, including our graduate students. We call them assistant hall directors. There's uh, one in each building and they advise those hall councils I was talking about, really building the leadership skills of the students who they work with. Then we also have our hall directors. Our hall directors are full-time master's level professionals who live in each residence hall and they're responsible for the overall administration of the building. Now they're a great resource for residents. So for example, if your student has maybe a, um, you know, a, a conflict uh, with their roommate or something like that and the RA you know, just can't quite help or whatever, the hall director is there. And we really have someone on call 24 seven so we kind of have those safety nets of staff who are always available for emergencies. Next, I want to switch gears. Um, Matt, if you can go ahead and post uh, poll number two, kind of want to gauge a little bit about um, our knowledge of our residence halls. Yep, will do. So here we just kind of want to get an, uh, an idea or a sense of how many of our residence halls are you familiar with? And as of right now, what is the most important housing item to you? So you can tell us how many of those residence halls you're already familiar with. Zero, one, two, three, four, five or more, great. Um, or two, our second question is, uh, as of right now, what is the most important housing item for you? Is that gonna be your building preference, your roommate preference, living learning community preference, or unsure at this time? We'll give it just a second for everybody to answer and then Matt will give us the results. A 
All right. So it looks like um, some of you aren't familiar with any of our residence halls. Well, that's okay, because I'm about to tell you about a few of them. Um, and then also it looks like we've got students um, within the group who know about five or more. So maybe you've been to our campus and um, kind of uh, gotten to see, uh, see around our residence halls. That's wonderful. I'll give you some insight on how you can get some more information about that here in just a second. As of right now, what's the most important housing item to you? It looks like your roommate preference is probably the most important. Also building preference and living learning community. Okay, great. All right. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and continue on. I want to share with you a little bit of information that is common to all of our residence halls. The first thing is that we have 24 hour front desks. And so students can come down to their front desk to get their mail and packages any time of day. Um, we also have pots and pans that students can check out, vacuums and equipment that they can check out, um, you know, all, all kinds of things essentially at that 24 hour front desk. In fact, our 24 hour front desks are actually staffed by two full time professionals um, that cover essentially from midnight to um, five o'clock PM. And then our students really just supplement those hours on nights and weekends. Um, but we do have 24 hour coverage at those front desks. So again, someone is always there to answer your questions. Someone is always there in case there's an emergency. We have 24 hour computer labs in each one of our residence halls. Um, and we actually just replaced those computers with all in ones not too long ago. And we re image those computers each semester. So that way we can stay on top of what our students need as far as software and hardware within our, our facilities go. We do have free laundry for our students. All of our residence halls are tobacco free. I don't know if I need to say it anymore, but of course all of our residence halls do have AC. Um, uh, all of our residence halls, each living unit has a refrigerator and a microwave in it. So we provide that so that you don't have to bring it or rent it or anything like that. We offer a wired and Wi-Fi connection in each one of our spaces. And in fact, each student, we call it kind of a port per pillow. Um, so each student has an ethernet port uh, within their room. We also have community kitchens in all of our buildings. All of our beds are 80 inch extra long twin beds. So if you're already thinking about doing some of that college shopping and um, that's how big our beds are. Um, and then we have cut the cord on cable and we actually have students who do TV streaming uh, with a service called Philo. And then that also means that they have access to an HBO Max account for free as well. So there's definitely no shortage of TV watching. Essentially our students can record up to 20 hours of TV time. They have access to HBO HD channels, including local channels. Um, and so our students enjoy that TV streaming. And, and you can watch that, of course, on your phone, your laptop, your tablet, your computer, um, or on your TV by way of Roku here on campus. We also have an MSU home device. So if you have smart home devices like Amazon Echoes and other um, wireless devices, you can connect to our network as well with a pre-shared key. Now let me tell you a little bit about our residence halls. Um, so there's a number of ways you can explore our residence halls right now. You can, of course, if you live close and you want to take a walking tour, you can walk around campus and on each building you're going to see um, kind of an overview of images and also some additional information about each building so that you can kind of get a sense of, you know, what, what are the rooms like in that building. You can, of course, also take our virtual tour, our campus virtual tour links straight from our MSU homepage. Um, on that, uh, that virtual tour, you're going to find, um, you know, 2D photos, 360 photos of all of our rooms, videos of all of our buildings. So that way you can really get some insight um, to what we have to offer. And then, of course, if you go to our Residence Life uh, webpage, um, essentially residencelife.missouristate.edu backslash residence hall living, uh, you're going to find um, all of our on-campus housing options, and you can explore each one of our residence halls at your leisure. Uh, we would encourage you to at least check out one traditional style hall and one suite style hall just to kind of get a sense of all of our different facilities. Now we have a number of different housing and meal plan choices to choose from. Our rates for housing and meals range from about $4,313 uh, to $5,723 per semester. So that's kind of the low and high end of our housing and meals for a semester. And that's based on this year. And of course, the Board of Governors, you know, um, 
approves our rates each year. So it um, will be up to them for sure for next year, but um, that kind of gives you an idea of where things are at for us. You'll always find the most updated rates on our rates page. And so I've got that linked there. Now, like I mentioned before, we have a number of different types of housing we would encourage you to explore on our website. So we have got, um, you know, traditional style residence halls where we have two person rooms with the bathroom down the hall. We also have two four and six person suite style living on campus. And for those of you who are transfer students, you might be eligible for our apartments. We have two apartment complexes on campus called Sun Villa Tower and Monroe Apartments. Um, and those are for upperclassmen students. They have uh, different policies within those apartment complexes, but they're very competitive uh, with off campus type apartments. And you can also um, lease them uh, essentially for the 10 months, but also for the summer on a separate contract. So we have lots of different housing choices. Um, and we have a number, like I said, of students who stay with us from year to year. And so sometimes students are um, kind of explore different residence halls from year to year, or sometimes move into our apartments as well. We have a number of meal plan choices. So we have two parts, if you will, to our meal plan. The first part is the meal swipes per week that you use in our dining centers. So that's going to either be 10, 14, 19, or unlimited meals per week. And then we also have choices of our dining dollars. Dining dollars are really a declining dollar balance that you can utilize at our retail locations in the Plaster Student Union and a few different places on campus. And those levels start at 165, 215, or 280 per semester. So again, all of that housing and meal plan choices add up to that, you know, four to five thousand dollars, if you will, um, like I mentioned a minute ago, um, for our housing and meal plan kind of range of, of prices for the semester. Now let's launch our, our third poll. So Matt, if you'll go ahead and launch our third poll for us. Great. As of right now, um, do you have a preferred roommate in mind? Yes or no? Or maybe if you don't know, you can put you don't know. I'm going to kind of talk about several options for you to consider there. I'll give you just a second for everybody to answer and then Matt will share the results with us. Next, I'm about to talk about the housing application process. And that way we can jump into kind of some more details. So Matt, if you want to post the results, Wonderful. As of right now, um, it looks like some of you, mo a majority of you don't have a roommate, um, preferred roommate in mind quite yet. Some of you do and some of you don't know. And, you know, if you're an incoming student for next fall, you know, you, you're probably just now kind of starting to talk with um, your close friends to figure out, you know, kind of who's, who's, uh, who's coming to Missouri State. And so um, you've got time to, to figure that out. And I'll kind of talk through what that looks like for us. Okay. So let me tell a few details about the housing application process. Taking just a second to switch that slide there. Sorry for that. Sorry for that delay. There we go. The housing application process. So a few things to know. First, you do need to be admitted before you're able to complete our housing application process. So if you haven't been admitted, I would encourage you to reach out to um, admissions and they're going to walk you through the process to make sure that uh, you can you can do that step first before you're able to fill out the housing application. Now know a couple things. Our fall housing application opens actually tomorrow at 2 p.m. So our fall housing application opens October 30th at 2 p.m. Um, and then any time after that, all the way up until school starts, we will have that housing application open. Now I will say uh, some good reasons, if you will, to complete that housing application early comes into play in just a moment because we do assignments based on when your housing application is complete. So I would encourage you, if you know you're coming to Missouri State, get that housing application done soon. Okay, so it opens tomorrow at 2 p.m. Now you might be wondering if I am a, a spring student joining us here in January. We did have a few of those students with us tonight. Just know that um, that application is actually already open. If you've been admitted and you're coming this January, you can already go in and complete that housing application online. Now, where you're going to find that housing application is going to be at mymissourystate.edu. Then you'll click the Campus Life tab. Under the housing section, you'll click, you'll click the link that says Complete Application. 
No, to have a complete application, you do need to include your $100 housing deposit, meningitis requirement, and also have a parent co-signature on file if you're under 18. Housing assignments are emailed to your MSU email the last day in May, for those who are joining us in fall, based on when you completed your housing application. Now, for those of you who are joining us this January, typically we start sending out housing assignments in early December for this January. Um, but again, for those who are coming in the fall of 2021, those uh, housing assignments come out at, at the last day in May. Some additional application details. Um, once you fill out your housing application, again, that's mymissourystate.edu under the Campus Life tab under the housing box, if you will, uh, click complete application, know a few things. You're also gonna find a link there called application summary. Now it can take a couple business days um, after you complete your application for our staff in our office to update all those pieces um, so that you can see that reflected. So just give us a couple business days um, to make sure that we're updating that for you so you know kind of your status of your specific housing application. You might also be wondering, several of you had a roommate in mind, um, and you can create a roommate group um, after both you and your preferred roommate have completed a housing contract. So in order, uh, the order of assignments uh, will be an average of the two students in that roommate group of your application completion dates. Um, now, some of you might be saying, well, I don't know who my roommate's going to be yet. That's okay. A couple things. One, you might check out our MSU new student community. Now, you would have received information probably in your admissions packet with regards to getting signed up for that. It's that Facebook-like community that you can uh, go out there and see who else is looking for roommates and kind of get a little bit uh, more information from each student and interact with them online uh, before you figure out if that's who you want to be a roommate with. Then just hop back into our housing application process and indicate um, that you want, you know, you have a preferred roommate uh, to be a part of your roommate group, if you will. Also know, during the housing application process, we're going to ask a series of questions. There's about 20 questions uh, in our application. You know, do you stay up late? Do you get up early? Um, you know, all those kinds of questions that help us understand um, best matches. And so we would, our housing application system um, and our software will actually match you with someone who answers similarly to your housing roommate matching questions. Now, keep in mind that a few factors in that <clears throat> were also um, going to take into consideration your building preferences and any living learning communities. So let's say, you know, you want to be a part of a living learning community, but your preferred roommate doesn't, that's going to be a conversation you want to have because you're probably going to get slated into that living learning community if that's where you want to be. So just make sure that, uh, you know, you indicate all of those things on your housing application. And then we'll also ask the question, are, you know, what's most important to you? Is it your roommate preference, your building preference, or your living learning community? And so we ask all those questions in your housing application. And then our software really helps us kind of slate students um, into the buildings and spaces. Now, again, just to remind you, we do go in um, application completion date order. So the sooner you complete your housing application, the earlier you're going to be assigned, if you will, within our process. And again, all students will receive their fall assignment for 2021, the last day in May. Now, keep in mind, after you receive your housing assignment, uh, we, we do have an option for you to look and see if there's changes you want to make. So after assignments have been made, you can change your housing assignment through July the 15th. Um, and so you'll be able to actually go on um, essentially in, you know, real time and see any open spaces in green and you can, you know, just select right into any open space in green that you're eligible for. Um, and so that process does open essentially between when you receive your housing assignment and July 15th. So that kind of gets us through majority or bulk of information with regards to, you know, costs and um, how to apply and when to apply and all that jazz. Um, so I think now we'll probably jump into our, um, the portion of our program where we want to answer any questions for you. Now, keep in mind, again, if you have personal questions, uh, we want you to just email residencelife at Missouri State. Or also know that if there is any questions that we don't get to tonight, also know that we will absolutely get to those questions. Um, it just might be, you know, tomorrow or, or Monday, but we will definitely make sure we answer all your questions you have about housing so you can feel comfortable about your choices and options on campus.
So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my video. And I think that we've got one of our Residence Live folks who's going to um, help me here. Um, let me also go ahead and stop sharing so that you can see me full screen, if you will. Uh, and then that way, um, we can answer some of your questions right here live on, on camera. So um, I've got uh, Barbie who's gonna be assisting me uh, by sharing some questions that uh, folks have got on the webinar tonight. So Barbie, take it away. Wonderful. So one of our questions is, do you match roommates with similar interests or similar degrees? Great question. So if you have a similar interest or a similar degree, that's where you might look at our living learning communities. In that regard, we do. If you are the same major as a business major and you both select that you want to be on the, the Bears business community, then yes. Um, you know, all the students who live on the Bears business community are all business majors. Um, now, we don't have uh, living learning communities for every major though. Um, but we do have uh, some general ones, if you will, that are also the interest-based living learning communities. Might be creative minds, might be sustainability that you're interested in, so a variety of those as well. And so we don't necessarily have ev an LLC for every interest or every major, but we do have a number of different LLCs that would put you together by students who have a similar interest or major. Okay, our next question is going to be, what is your policy on emotional support animals? Great question. So uh, your first step, if you are, uh, if you have an emotional support animal that you need to bring to campus with you is gonna be to reach out to our Disability Resource Center. And if you go to their website, actually on the left-hand side, there is a link that says request an accommodation, or maybe it says establish an accommodation. Um, if you click that link and fill out the form, they're going to reach out to you and they're going to ask all the questions that they need to be able to determine um, if an emotional support animal is an accommodation that they would provide for you. Now, I can tell you, we work with our Disability Resource Center on a number of different things. And essentially, if they make the accommodation, if they say this is the accommodation for a student, we make it here in housing. So we work very closely with our Disability Resource Center, um, ensuring that we're meeting the needs of our students and emotional support animals is one of those things. So we do allow emotional support animals on campus, um, but you do need to reach out to the Disability Resource Center for that process. Wonderful, our next question is also kind of along that line. Do you allow pets, for example, small dogs to live with a student on campus? Good question. The only pets at this time for incoming students that we allow is uh, fish uh, in tanks, like fish tanks that are less than 20 gallons. So we don't allow any small dogs, um, you know, uh, or pets like that. Um, but we do allow fish in 20 gallon tanks. Mm -hmm. What is the cheapest residence hall? Great question. If you're looking for an economy option, if you will, um, I would encourage you to check out either Freddie, Wells, or Woods. Um, those would be some options I would check out first. Um, you know, we have, they're different in different ways, if you will. Uh, Freddie and Wells um, both have community style bathrooms. Woods House has our single user private bathrooms. And, um, you know, Wells has both two person and suite style. And Freddie has two and three person room style. Um, Woods House has both one person and uh, two person rooms, again, with the single user private bathrooms. So kind of a, a variety of combinations within those buildings, if you will, if you're looking for um, a way in which you can, um, you know, um, save some money here at college, I would, I would explore Freddie Wells or Woods. And I would also encourage you, if you're looking for um, an option for that, I would also encourage you to um, consider on-campus employment as well. Um, and all of our on-campus employment opportunities um, are listed at jobs.missouristate.edu. So we usually post most of our incoming student um, positions um, in, in, in the fall semester is when we typically do a bunch of hiring. Um, but for those of you who are coming this January, we, we actually um, are going to post tomorrow a student desk worker position that's going to be open um, for students to join us this January as um, front desk workers. So we're looking to hire a few more for spring semester already. So um, yeah, so jobs.missouristate.edu if you're looking for student employment as well. Is there a detailed list of items available for checkout at the front desks? 
Good question. You know, each desk changes a little bit because it's based on the building and the hall council. They get together and decide what items that they um, want at each front desk to offer. And so um, it does have variation a little bit from building to building. For the most part, though, all of our front desks are either going to have vacuums or for those that don't have carpet, I think they also have the Swiffers. Um, you're going to find usually some um, sporting equipment like soccer balls or basketballs. Um, some have board games and some general things like that. Um, all of them have some kind of cooking equipment like pots and pans. Now, what types of pots and pans varies from building to building. Um, most of them have some kind of tool, like small tool set. So sometimes our students come in from their car and they're like, I just need a little tool here or there to get this, you know, tweaked. We do have some tools at the front desk. So it's kind of a variety. Um, we do also have luggage carts at each of our front desks. Um, students who utilize those, you know, for uh, moving moving in or out, or um, if you're, you know, bringing in a, a big container of water from Walmart or whatever, you know, and we've got the luggage carts to help you um, utilize those. So I would say there's some standard things at each desk, but um, what exactly is at each desk does vary a little bit from building to building based on what the Hall Council has decided to have at the front desk. Okay, our next question is, are there are the Ethernet cords provided or should I bring my own? Great question. Uh, you should provide your own Ethernet cord. Um, so I would bring that with you. Um, it kind of depends how far from, you know, the Ethernet port you're going to be as to how long you might be like, well, how long most of the students can get by with like a 10 foot Ethernet cord and that's going to do that's going to do you, you good there. Um, you know, most of our Ethernet ports are positioned kind of in the middle, if you will, of the room along the wall. Um, and so I would say a, a 10 foot cord is probably going to be enough. But, um, you know, you can always if you're like, well, I don't know, should I get a 10 foot cord or 15 or 20 or whatnot, you can always wait till you get here. And they also sell them at the bookstore. So uh, don't fret about the Ethernet cord, but I would encourage you, you know, either bring one or buy one um, to have with you. Ethernet is always going to be kind of our fastest data connection, especially if you're a gamer, um, definitely consider the Ethernet cord. Okay, our next question is, are TVs provided for the dorms or do we have to bring our own? Good question. So um, we have actually seen kind of a shift. I can tell you that TVs are not provided in most of our residence halls. Now we do have a few spaces where we provide TVs, but it is limited. Um, and so for the most part, you would want to bring your own TV. Um, also keeping in mind though, we have seen a shift in our students and that a number of our students we didn't see a lot of TVs come in this year, and we actually didn't see a whole lot of TVs coming in last year at Move In um, because students do have that flexibility with the TV streaming using that, that Philo service. Um, they can watch TV on their tablet, their phone, um, you know, their TV by way of Roku, but their computer. And so we're seeing a lot of students just watching TV, if you will, on their computer or on their tablet or even, even on their phone. So um, I would say we've seen less TVs, but you can bring your own, absolutely. Um, if you are bringing a TV, uh, we would encourage you to utilize the, the Roku Ultra. Um, that's the, gonna be the ethernet connected version of the Roku. And so that's gonna give you the best TV streaming service on campus if you're bringing a TV. But a number of our students also bring TVs when they're um, doing gaming systems and stuff too. But so again, uh, as an overall statement, I would say you would want to bring your own TV, but um, keep in mind, of course, you're definitely going to want to talk to your roommate so that you don't bring two TVs. You definitely won't need two TVs, so. Okay, will the new residence hall be open in the fall of 2021 and can freshmen live there? All great questions. Um, yes, we are slated to open the new residence hall in the fall of 2021. Um, and so the new residence hall is going to be very similar in style, I would say, to Woods House with two person rooms um, and then the single user private bathrooms. So if you're looking to kind of see like, hmm, what's it going to be like? And it's going to be new. Um, and also um, you can kind of get an idea, if you will, by looking at Woods House. Can first year students live there? Yes, absolutely. 
absolutely. Our first year students can live in any of our residence halls except for Sun Villa Tower and Monroe Apartments. Again, those are our two apartment complex, um, apartment complexes on campus, um, and those are reserved for just the upperclassmen. But our, our first year students can live anywhere on campus, as well as our upperclassmen or transfer students can live anywhere on campus. Now, I did notice we do have a few transfer students. Our transfer students also, there is a transitions or transfer student LLC that you might consider. Um, so the students on that floor, they're all transfer students. So again, they might be transferring to Missouri State, new to Missouri State, but maybe not new to the college experience. So um, definitely consider the transfer student LLC as well um, for our transfer students. But but back to the question, which was, uh, can students, freshman students live in the new residence hall? Absolutely. Okay, if we choose a meal plan and then decide to change it, can it be changed in the middle of the semester? All good questions. So um, our most popular meal plans, if you're like, mm, which do I choose? is gonna be the 14 meal plan. So, and that changes from year to year, but this year, right now in this moment, we, I checked yesterday, our most popular meal plan is the 14 meal plan. Uh, so like 14 meals per week and the 165 dining dollar option. So um, if you're looking to go with what's popular, that's it. But also know that you can increase your meal plan at any time throughout the semester. You have the first three weeks of school to decrease it. So if you are unsure, you might go with a lower and then increase it as you need, um, but know that you've got the first three weeks to figure out if that meal plan is right for you and decrease that meal plan as you need to. So, um, and then once you get here on campus, you're actually gonna have access to, um, it's like your My Missouri State account, and you can go in and you can see how many meals you ate, where did you spend your dining dollars, kind of a, a transaction history, if you will, so that maybe a couple weeks in, when you get that email reminder from our office of, hey, don't forget, you know, if you're going to lower your meal plan, you got to do it within three weeks. Um, when you get that email, you can kind of see what have your trends been with regards to meal plan usage and then make a decision at that point. Again, you can increase your meal plan at any time. You can only decrease it the first three weeks of each semester, both fall and spring. Okay. Is it possible to choose two preferred roommates? Good question. We only allow students to have one preferred roommate. Um, and so at this time, um, you know, you would both have to have a complete housing application to make the roommate group, but we do only allow one other student in that roommate group at this time. Now, once you're a returning student with us, you've lived with us your first year and you're reapplying to live on campus, then you do have priority after that. Um, and some of our students who live in, let's say, Blair Shannon, you know, in six person suites, they've got five other students. They're looking to get together and then they find a suite their second year all together. So um, as a reapplication student, it's a little different, but as an incoming student, we do ask that you only just preference that one roommate. Mm -hmm. Can you complete the housing application even if you're unsure of where you're going to be attending? Yeah, absolutely. So we would encourage you to fill out the housing application early and soon, which it opens again tomorrow, October the 30th at 2 p.m. for our fall 2021 students. Um, and for our spring students joining us in January, it's already open. Um, and if you're considering, you're like, okay, well, I'm still kind of, you know, keeping all my options open, great. Um, you can actually cancel your housing uh, contract with us all the way through May 1st and still get your housing deposit back. So there's no penalty if you cancel before May May 1st of 2021. So it, for our fall students, that is. So if you were a fall student for fall 2021, you know, and you're still kind of deciding, a okay, complete the housing application and you can cancel with us before May 1st to get that $100 housing deposit back. Yep. How is housing being handled with COVID? Are you doing one or two to a room? That's a great question. We actually, we know a number of campuses that kind of did both choices. You know, we, we have some campuses we heard were doing, you know, one student per room. And we heard that some campuses were doing two students per room. We actually kind of took a hybrid approach. And so we have about half of our inventory right now that is set aside for students who have selected or chosen to be in a private room. And about half of our um, inventory is set aside for students who want a roommate and want to be in a double room. And so, 
we kind of have a hybrid approach with regards to COVID. Um, we know that there's going to be more students even going into next year that are just going to want that additional privacy. So we are still going to continue to offer private rooms for first year um, incoming students. Um, but no, do know that that private room does come um, at an additional cost of a time and a half uh, the regular room rate. And so you'll find all that information on our rates page. So again, if you go to our Residence Life Housing and Dining Services website, and then uh, you go to our rates page, you'll be able to see additional information on the cost of a private room. But do know that we kind of took a hybrid approach. We have some students who want a private room this year um, and wanted that additional privacy um, because of COVID or just because they wanted the additional privacy. And then we also have some students who wanted a roommate um, you know, during this time. So we kind of have a hybrid, about half of our inventory is both. So um, you know, we're, we're not 100% sure where COVID will lead us next year, of course, um, but uh, we're gonna kind of keep tabs on things and go from there. Are most of the residence halls co-ed? Yes. Um, in fact, um, all of our residence halls are co-ed um, with regards to, you know, we have um, different genders in each one of our residence halls. Mm -hmm. Then we have a what is happening on the last day of May? The, great question. The last day of May is when we send out housing assignments for all of our incoming students who are incoming for the fall of 2021. So you will fill out your housing application, hopefully tomorrow at two. Uh, and then um, come May, uh, the last day in May, that's when we send out housing assignments. And then you might be moving in then with us that August. Can freshmen live in any of the dorms? Yes. So our, our first year students can live in any of our residence halls. Um, the only two exceptions to that is going to be our Sun Villa Tower apartments and our Monroe apartments. So those are really only for our upperclassmen students. Um, but first year students can live anywhere else, including the new residence hall. So, Is there a curfew for coming and going in the residence halls? We don't have a curfew. Um, and so we, we don't do bed checks and we don't do curfews or anything like that. Um, we will ask that you show your ID, um, you know, your student ID at the front desk after 10 o'clock PM. Um, and then, you know, um, we're gonna lock the doors down at a certain time where you have to use your access card to get in because of course we wanna create some, some additional security for the building and knowing that the students who live in that building are in that building, if you will, but we're, we, we don't do curfews or uh, bed checks or anything like that. Nope. We have a couple of student athlete questions, one of which being which building do student athletes live in and then do athletic teams live near or close to each other? A great question. So we work very closely with athletics and uh, they let us know kind of, you know, they do try to, because you don't always necessarily know um, who else on your team is coming in, if you will, as an incoming freshman. And so you don't always know all the other players. Um, so they actually send us lists, athletics does, of who is like roommates with each other. Um, because sometimes they want, you know, um, like on the football team, if they want, you know, the same kind of linemen together or something like that. So they, they have their preferences. Sometimes it's based on who they know, you know, if the student athletes have talked to their coaches and the coaches have said, I want these two students together, then that's what we do. So we essentially get lists from our athletic department of who should be roomed together. So if you were a student athlete and you're like, I know there's another student coming in and I want to live with them, then you should be talking to your coach. Um, so that they know your preferences and then they can kind of talk you through um, you know how they'd usually send over assignments to us. Um, we do have um, some athletic suites set aside um, for students typically in Hammonds and Hutchins um, but it also depends on where the coaches have requested that housing but typically it's Hammonds or Hutchins but again it's up to the coaches so the coaches kind of tell us hey we want these students together um, and then they we work very closely to make sure we implement the housing plan so that way there can be a cohesive team. When will we know our housing assignment if we are entering Missouri State in the spring? Great question. So if you are coming and joining us this January, um, we typically send those housing assignments out around early December. So usually the first week in December or so um, is when we send out those housing assignments. So you'll know about a month beforehand. 
um, you know, which residence hall you've been assigned to. And then that way you can start to get to know your roommate or if you have a roommate preference, you just indicate that, you know, on your housing application. Again, if you are joining us this January, that housing application is actually already open. So you can go on tonight if you wanted to mymissourystate.edu under the housing um, you know, channel there under the Campus Life tab and complete your application tonight if you choose. Um, again, you'll receive your housing assignment if you're coming, um, joining us in January, you'll receive that the first week in December. I'm a freshman. So will my roommate be a freshman or will they be in any grade? Good question. So for the most part, we actually try to keep our upperclassmen students uh, roomed with upperclassmen students and our first year students roomed with other first year students. We found that that is just kind of um, in general over the years been the preference of our incoming students. And so that is um, typically the case. You're, if you are an incoming freshman, you're gonna be paired with another incoming freshman. Now you might be asking the question, well, I know I have this upperclassman friend I wanna live with. If that's the case, call our office and we can kind of walk you through that. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be living with another first year student. Yep. And then, of course, based on your living learning community preferences, your building preferences that you indicate in the housing application, and also how you answer those 20 roommate matching questions. Do you need to be formally invited to the Honors College before applying to live in Scholars House? Great question. So um, you can preference honors, uh, you can preference the honors community LLC and your housing application before you're admitted to the Honors College. And you can preference Scholars House as a building before you're admitted to the Honors College. So you can complete your housing application essentially tomorrow, even though you might not have been invited yet to the, house, the Honors College. However, to be assigned to Scholars House, you do need to be in the Honors College. So when we go to make assignments in May, that's when it's really critical that you have worked with the Honors College and have got your paperwork on file with them already. Um, essentially, we can see in the system who is a part of the Honors College, and then we look at those building preferences to know who wants to go into Scholars. And um, you do at that time need to be in the Honors College to live in Scholars House. But if you're like, mm, can I go ahead and preference it when I feel my housing application tomorrow? Absolutely. Great. Our next question is, can we bring our own mattresses to the dorms? Good question. So we don't allow you to bring your own mattresses to the residence halls. Um, I can tell you that our, our mattresses are actually fire retardant um, and, as well as like our drapes and some other things just because we take fire sa safety very seriously. Um, but if you are thinking, well, I have like an orthopedic mattress and it, it would be an accommodation, that's where again, you would reach out to the Disability Resource Center um, to request that kind of accommodation. But at this time, we don't allow students to bring their own mattresses, we provide them. Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question is, can we tour the campus housing? Great question. So right now we can tour it virtually. You can tour it through our um, you know, campus virtual tour, 360 photos, our videos online. Unfortunately, we don't have any in-person tour rooms right now um, simply because of the pandemic. Um, now, I will tell you that down the road, we are hoping we can get back to normal. Um, I think sooner than later, we're all hoping for that. Um, but at this point in time, uh, we are not having any in-person tours. And so, um, again, we, we hope that changes down the road sooner than later. But um, right now, that is uh, kind of where things stand, is that we uh, don't have any in-person tours, but you can absolutely explore our uh, residence halls virtually and through our 360 photos and things like that. What accommodations do you have for students with food allergies? Oh, great question. So um, a couple things, if you have food allergies and you're like, you know, um, our, our, I will say this, our dining center, they're very familiar with lots of different types of food allergies. Um, first of all, I would encourage you when you get here as a student or maybe even during your SOAR session, which is like your orientation and registration um, session, I would reach out to our dining center manager um, and talk with them. Um, usually if once you're here, they'll give you a tour of the dining center and show you all the like dining center hacks, if you will, of like, okay, here's where you find your soy milk and here's where you find, you know, uh, all the different things, if you will. There's a number of things that I think are obvious with regards to allergies and things like that. Um, of course, they label all their food. Every item that they serve on the line has a little um, card at the top. I'll tell you, I eat in the dining center. Um, 
And so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, you know, kind of the layout and everything, but know that they, there's a card, every meal, everything has a card at the top that talks about the nutritional information. Um, it even links to like your, my fitness pal, if you're in, in, into that. Um, and so it'll say, you know, like whether it has nuts or whatever the case might be. Um, but they have a couple different lines. One is called rooted in Blair Shannon, which is typically going to be like your vegetarian or vegan line. Um, and then over here in Gar's dining center, um, they have, um, it's called the G8 line and it avoids the eight most common allergies. And I don't know if I can name them all, but it's like shellfish, nuts, um, all kinds of things. But I can tell you again, our, our dining center is very familiar with allergies um, and working with students. Um, there was even a point in time, I guess last year, I, a student was like, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so and I'm here to pick up my meal. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, that's really cool. They literally had made, they, she just called in advance. She told them, you know, what she needed and they made it for her. So I know that they'll go to that extreme, you know, like to make sure that you have the meals that you need based on um, whatever you need. Um, another thing is a lot of things in our dining center really are seamless. I just learned a few years ago that the purple handles meant that it was gluten-free. I don't, I don't eat gluten-free. Um, and so I just didn't notice it. But when you talk about universal design, sometimes those things are just seamless and seamlessly incorporated into the dining center so much that I didn't even notice. But our students who eat gluten-free definitely know it. So I think it's um, kind of just understanding what all our, our dining centers have to offer. Um, talk to a manager when you first get here. They're going to give you a tour. And like I said, kind of give you all the hacks, if you will, of that dining center so that you know where to look for the foods that you're looking for. Um, and also what the foods that you're looking to avoid. Um, and if you have any questions along the way, they're super eager to answer any questions you might have. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but again, um, we, we have our dining services um, team works within the umbrella of residence life. And we can always, you can always reach out to our dining centers, um, dining center team, um, and they can answer any like specific questions um, about maybe a specific allergy. Okay, our next question is, are three meals a day offered every day of the week in the dining centers? Yes. Um, so um, our um, Blair Shannon Dining Center is open from seven to seven um, and they do serve three meals, um, you know, Monday through Friday. And then our Garst is open from 7.30 to 7.30, Monday through Friday. Um, and then on the weekends, they offer breakfast in one dining center, lunch in the other, and then dinner in both. So um, that hopefully gives you an idea. There is a breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day of the week. Um, we also have um, what's called after hours, and that's um, kind of that late night meal, if you will. Um, and I think it runs like Sunday or Monday through Thursday, um, and that's like a 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. at night. So um, kind of a, a late night meal, if you will, um, that your meal plan also works for. So on some days they serve a fourth meal. Okay, we are coming close to the end here. Okay. Um, but another question, are there any cleanliness guidelines generally due to COVID? Good question. Um, so I know that within our residence halls, our custodial team is doing some additional cleaning. Um, we, I know I see them out here in the lobbies. They're spraying down handles and hard surfaces and elevators and, and that kind of stuff. Um, also, in general, you're going to see right now, um, of course, we have our masking policy in place. And so masks are required, um, you know, because of COVID. Um, as far as cleaning within a, a residence hall room, like roommates, that's going to be really up to the roommates to kind of work out. But as far as our common areas, general areas, elevator buttons, things like that, um, our custodial team has definitely kind of amped up things. Um, and I, I've seen them out here in our own lobby here within the residence halls, you know, um, wiping things down multiple times a day and making sure we're doing kind of taking that extra step, if you will, during COVID. Um, and so I know that that's what our team is doing. Um, we even have those like foggers that, you know, you use and stuff like that. I've seen them using some of those on um, some of our surfaces as well. So they're kind of going the extra mile as far as cleaning within a room. I think that's going to be up to the students to kind of figure out. But, um, but hopefully that answers the question about cleaning and COVID. Okay, I think we have time for one more. Okay. So can the housing application be filled out ahead of time and then submitted at two tomorrow, or is it closed currently and it can only be started after two tomorrow? 
Great question. It is actually closed currently and it will open at two. So um, you'll be able to hop on at two and that's when you'll be able to access the housing application and begin. Um, there's not kind of like a, a pre pre fill out portion, if you will. Um, you just hop on it too and kind of step through it. So yeah. All right, well, those were some great questions, everybody. I really appreciate your time spending, um, you know, your Thursday evening with us, if you will. So I had a lot of fun tonight asking all your, all, answering all your questions. Um, you might still have questions along the way. Know that you can email us at residencelife.missouristate I'm sorry, at missourystate.edu at any time. And we are happy to answer your questions. If we didn't get to your question tonight, um, then we're gonna make sure that we answer that question in the next day or so. Um, whenever we make, you know, we get a report of like all the questions and make sure we've answered them all. So that'll be critical for us. Um, so again, um, and our staff is in person here in the office. We're actually in the office tonight, um, you know, just uh, during this webinar, if you will. Um, and so we're, we're here in the office, if you will, from Monday through Friday from eight to five and happy to answer any questions you might have. Shoot us an email, give us a call. We are here to help you. So we are excited once again. We can't wait to see your housing application tomorrow uh, starting October 30th at 2 p.m. if you're a fall 2021 student. And for those of you joining us in January, you can already go ahead and fill out and complete that housing application now. So um, I appreciate your time. Uh, I really enjoyed everything tonight. Um, this was a great setup and thank you to admissions for hosting, um, hosting us as well. So I will uh, 